dear friends, and welcome to this uh, new uh, and continued time of worship with Glenelg United Methodist Church as we continue our online services um, during this time of global pandemic. Uh, I keep thinking to myself as days go by that this is just the craziest thing that that we as the church, as people of God, are, are doing and we're about. And then I think, no, uh, God's people have a long history of following God into unusual and unique and crazy sort of places. And they did it faithfully and boldly and with an eye toward um, the heavens and uh, looking uh, for all the signs of God's in their midst, God in their midst, and where they see God, they follow deeply. So uh, I greet you with great longing and desire to be with you, to see you face to face. And that time is going to come soon, uh, although never soon enough. Um, and as we always do here in our time of worship, we will begin with uh, a time of prayer as Miss Amanda brings us a prelude. Uh, I know that there are many concerns on your heart. We do pray every evening at 8 p.m. online. All are welcome to join us. We carry a prayer list with us through that online prayer and through our days. Uh, so you're just welcome to get things to us to put on that prayer list. Uh, God is listening. God is with us. God wishes for us to all unburden our hearts and minds right now. Uh, so in this time of prelude, um, let's pray and, and release to God, uh, into God's care, all that is burdening your heart this morning. Let us pray. Good morning, Gumsey family. Happy Sunday. Welcome to my home. I am delighted that we can gather in this unusual way. I have been praying for all of you 
and I appreciate your prayers for me and for my family. It's been wonderful and I'm so thankful that I have been able to connect with so many of you via Zoom and text and phone calls and I cannot wait for us all to get to be together in the sanctuary and at the church when we are able. If you will join me this morning in the call to worship, the words will be printed on the screen and though we will not be able to hear each other's voices, God will be able to hear us. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Blessed be God who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Merciful God of every gift, we come to worship today seeking many things. Some of us are seeking peace. Some are seeking healing. Some are seeking answers and others are looking for the right questions. We trust you that you will give us what we need. Fill us with your spirit this day and every day. Amen. Good morning, friends, and warmest greetings to all. Although we can't be in each other's physical presence this morning, we can absolutely praise our Lord and Savior together. Nothing can stand in the way of that. Psalm 95 tells us, come, sing joy to your Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. With those inspiring words, I now invite you to join in singing our opening hymn, Be Thou My Vision, brought to us this morning by the Polk Street United Methodist Church in Amarillo, Texas. Let us sing. you and look forward to the day that we meet together once again in our beautiful sanctuary. I'm doing a reading today from the book of Ezekiel, the Valley of the Dry Bones, which is difficult to interpret and even somewhat disturbing when you read it. But it is a message full of hope, a hope of resurrection for an exiled city or exiled country, and hope perhaps hope for a prophecy of a resurrection of our Lord Christ. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, 
prophecy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and you will, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophecy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Bless now the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts, that they might be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are our rock, our redeemer. Amen. Well, we continue on in the sermon series of Lent uh, very differently uh, than we expected to be as I was putting the sermon series together a couple months ago. Uh, but here at Lent 5, we're thinking about what it means to love what matters and to give up fear. What might it look like to give up fear in our lives? Um, I think about the times in life when everything seemed to be going so well um, until right? Until something. Uh, I think about the times in life when everything had been planned within an inch of perfection. I was sure at least perfection until something. Something happened and some plans didn't go the way that they were meant to. So every Sunday that we gather, uh, your pastor and your staff and a whole host of laity who pour out their service for you week by week, uh, we create the space within which we worship and encounter God. And every Sunday, there is a moment when the pastor and the lector are processing forward and they pause in front of the cross bearer. We bow our heads and say a prayer. And that prayer includes uh, a number of different words for the day. But in particular, there's always some words like, uh, Lord, uh, for all that we have poured into the plans of this day, we now surrender our will into your hands. And we pray that your plans come through and your plans bear fruit and carry the day. We seek to let go of our expectations for all that we put together and hoped for and just want God's will to be done and to be known. Life is like this, right? We work hard. We plan. We plan everything from when we get up in the morning to the meal we'll have at dinner. And it just doesn't always work that way. Things just don't always go, often don't go according to our plans. And as the people of God, we are part of an eternal tradition that understands that and allows ourselves to be shifted from our places of expectation and moved into line with what God's plans were for the day, uh, whether they were our plans or not, right? So the Valley of Dry Bones, such a fabulous reading uh, and really fabulously done by Craig. Thank you, Craig. It's just such a story in the life of God's people. Israel had been at the top of their game. They were doing well, they had plenty, they had enough resources. They could do mostly anything they wanted until, right? Until Babylon came into their borders and 
came warring with them and conquered them and killed many and carried away many and destroyed uh, the people of Israel in their entirety, except God remained constant and faithful to them. They, at that time of being captured by Babylon, they were in the Valley of Dry Bones. Now, we've been there too. Many of us have been to the Valley of Dry Bones. We know what it looks like and feels like. Uh, it's that place where the future looks bleak, where our despair is palpable, where we feel helpless and hopeless. Um, it's where we might find ourselves after a loved one dies or after a layoff happens or something that we thought was secure um, is no longer secure. Uh, or even in, in this time of um, social isolation and distancing, just our uncertainty of where does this end and what does it look like? Where is that light at the end of the tunnel? There are times and places that we say, wow, this looks like the Valley of Dry Bones. Who could have imagined a month ago what we would be doing as church today? So we're just reminded of how precarious life is, this Valley of Dry Bones. And if we forgot just how fragile life is, life happens. Crazy things like this happen and reminds us that we do not control life or our destinies, uh, even day by day, that there is a far greater plan and a divine guidance and a divine hand of God in our lives and in all of God's creation. When we allow our heartache for our unmet expectations and plans to override the beauty and the possibility of each and every day, we can find ourselves moving into places of fear or despair um, as I was writing the sermon, I saw two cardinals outside the window fighting as they do over mating rights and territory and food, and they fluttered at each other and pecked at each other and did all that cardinal stuff until one finally flew away, the other one having been dominant and won, uh, won the fight. And um, that is just part of the built-in way of God's creation, even in our humanity. We are survivalists, and we struggle to... Uh, have all that we need and when we feel threatened we we fight harder and we hoard and we blame and we look for who's wrong and who caused this and the valley of dry bones the bones pile up and the 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 sense of uh, death becomes stronger and stronger but there is another way and it's not a secret way everyone has experienced it if even for a fleeting moment that that death and evil cannot even quench within us this this innate place of hope and birth and, and, and new life and opportunity. It dwells within us deeply. Uh, we see it in those who, who are working so hard to provide food for others in need. We see it in our hospital workers who pour themselves out, who jump into the line of fire to help in this time of need. There are heroes. We see it in all the ways that humanity steps forward and says, no, darkness will not win. Evil cannot conquer. We, God's people, will overcome and will join together in unity and hope and goodness. This is what Ezekiel sees in his vision. He spoke the word of the Lord to the dry bones. He saw the power of that word, join the bones together and put flesh on those bones and new life and new hope, covered them with flesh, restored their skin. And then the spirit came into the valley and it came from the four winds from every corner of the sky, as mysterious and as powerful as it came into the clay that God fashioned with Adam and breathed God's breath of life into Adam. And in the valley of dry bones, God breathed God's breath of life on, over those bones, those now sinewy flesh bodies with no life in them, and they were restored to life. God said, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. That's the way of the Spirit. That's the way of God's people. There are, there are people in the world who see these acts of grace and mercy as just sort of momentary things along the way, that they are the exceptions to the rule. Uh, there are people who, who see the hope and see the light and say, well, that was good for a moment, and now back to reality of this other despair. And God's people have another way. We are people who know that those moments of grace and mercy and joy aren't exceptions, but they are the rule. They are God's creation and kingdom that has everything that we need, even in the moments of trial and storm. 
For those of us who live in the spirit, we know that our passports are stamped with heaven. Uh, God has signed our declaration of independence and we are free to live as God's people joyfully, uh, helping one another without fear of uh, not having enough. Uh, our destination is set toward heaven, not the valley of dry bones. We just see evidence of the power of the Spirit all around us. When we see it, it's contagious, and we catch fire with it, and we do more, and we step in and lean forward and say, God, may your will be done. We abandon fear. We abandon despair. We give that up, Lord God, and move into the power of your hope and your joy. That power is with us, even when we're separated one from another. Even when we're in social distancing, the power of goodness that flows from one another I catch it from you. It is contagious in the moment. It is the reality of God's breath among us. My friends, this is Lent, and we are definitely in a wilderness journey. And God's spirit reigns. God's will will be done, and all is well, and all manner of things shall be well. I speak in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite us now into a moment of prayer as we gather up all of the invitations that God extends to us, and we say yes, Lord, to all of them. Uh, it's a time for our offering. Uh, there is the online giving option through our um, online church portal at glenlumc.org, or there's an option here on this page for your giving. Uh, the church continues to do her ministries. We work hard out there, uh, and we seek your support, your continued pledges and tithes. We also know that we're in a time of unique financial challenge. And if that's you, if you've got financial challenges, we understand. Uh, talk to me. Let me know. Let us know how we can partner together. Uh, and we'll do all we can to walk together faithfully through all these things. Uh, but as we receive this uh, special music from Doug, let's pray and take a time for our tithes and our offerings. <laughs> Let us pray. 
Thank you, God, for the gifts of these today, for the abundance of your people and the abundance of all that creation brings to us in our good lives. We, we give unto you all the gifts of our financial resources, all the gifts of our time and our talent. We seek for you to use us and spend us out into the world to your people in need. And as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And my friends, um, before we go into our benediction and uh, dismissal and blessing, uh, I have news to share with you. Uh, I could never imagine in a million years uh, sharing news um, in this sort of setting, this digital recorded setting, uh, as opposed to in person, uh, seeing and sharing our, our eyes and, and, and hearts face to face. Um, but uh, I share with you the news that um, I have been uh, given the opportunity to uh, move to a church in Michigan, uh, to serve in a church in Michigan uh, at First United Methodist Church in Northville, which happens to be within about a 30 minute parameter of all of my family. Um, I know that this comes uh, as a surprise and uh, will take us through some journeys of grief and uh, as we have some closure. Certainly my heart is sad, uh, um, tremendously sad uh, to think about life ahead without seeing all of you every week. Um, but God's people uh, persevere in, in all ways and you have uh, an amazing congregation, a lot of great strengths, and you are prepared to do just the best work in the world. Um, no matter who is uh, leading you as your pastor. Um, so with great love and appreciation for all that we have shared, for all the affirmations of the Spirit at work among us, um, I will uh, share with you that my last Sunday will be uh, probably the first Sunday in June, and my start date at First United in Northville will be uh, the first in July, um, where I'll be going there as an associate pastor. Um, so we will have time for conversation and closure, uh, and in fact today there will be a Zoom meeting held at noon, uh, held by Lisa Dolce, um, and we'll have that address for you on our website uh, so that you can join in there um, as we process that through. Uh, fear not, give up fear this day, give up fear for Lent, uh, and know that God is very present providing all the courage and strength that is needed for all events of life. And so, my friends, um, I share now, go forth in peace. Go forth without fear. Go forth claiming and finding the places in each day where you, where you encounter fear and you have the opportunity to let it go, to surrender to God and let the Spirit fill you with opportunities for hope and joy and abundance, uh, the things that are the Spirit um, and the gifts of the Spirit that we have. Go forth in confidence, my friends. And may the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us now and always. Amen.